Hello everyone, Sheila back again. Welcome to my channel. Today I am up in my it's my middle sized bedroom where I keep all my wool. And as you can see it's quite piled up. I'll push my screen back on my computer and you can see how high it goes. And that's a ceiling, there's not much space left from the top of those piles and the ceiling. So I have been up here sorting out, tidying it up a little bit because um, I had been pulling balls out for to do this and that and the other and we're getting the wool I got from um, Mariners, not Mariners, the wool that I got from uh, Majestic. I wanted to sort some way out to put all that as well. And if you've seen my videos before, but over here, there used to be a shelf in the middle of this row here. And it was stopping me, really, it was stopping me from piling them things up higher because you had that shelf and then you could only pack a couple of things and then you had a gap and then there was a shelf and the same further up. So I took that shelf out and that, I can get more in, the, in that space there now. But as the wool starts coming down, I'll put the shelf back again because these were my husband's shelves. This used to be his workroom for, he used to fix um, televisions and VCRs and all sorts of things like that. He wasn't a, um, a TV and a service engineer, like, but he just liked to do things like that and he was very good at what he did. So all the bedrooms in this house, except my own bedroom, have shelves like this. Because my two of my sons used to share this room at one time. So my husband used to have the smaller bedroom. When my first son left home, we had the one small bedroom. So he put shelves up in that one. But when the two brothers that shared this room left, he put all his shelves up in here. And he's got shelves over the other side. You can't see them, but there's other side of the room, the shelves there as well. And there are shelves, this bench here, there are shelves underneath this bench, so I can start piling stuff under there if I want as well. There's something my husband, I think he used to put the shelves up for something to do as well. <laughs> but he had all components and everything imaginable for fixing televisions and VCRs and it was only when the um the VCRs and that's and the television started changing he wasn't as interested because the components inside weren't the same as what they used to be and he didn't like the way they went. But he still worked on here because he fixed anything. Irons he used to fix my, you know, a few times he's fixed my iron and Anything electrical that could be fixed, repaired, that's what he used to do. He was a jack of all trades. And in all the years we were married, we were married for 47 years before he passed. In all those years, we never had to fix, had to pay anyone to fix anything. Televisions, washing machines, fridges, cookers, irons. The TV, VCRs, uh, the whole lot, lot of them. And that's the one thing, one, one of the main things I miss about my husband. I now have to pay for anything that goes wrong. I have to pay for my car, pay for washing machine, fridge. <laughs> I think I need a new iron as well. I have a spare one, but I like to have one spare just in case the other one goes wrong. So I'm probably going to have to buy another iron and... But he would have fixed them, no trouble at all. And microwave, he used to fix those as well. And just anything at all possible that you can think of that can be fixed, he fixed. He never knew these, he could do all these things until he married me. And I complained about how much it was going to cost to get this fixed or that fixed. And so he just said, oh, well, I'll have a look at it myself, you know, and he knew it just... 
his brain just racked up. He just knew where everything went and what everything was for and how everything worked. And he had a kind of mechanics brain, I suppose you'd put it that way. One of my sons takes after him. The other two aren't too bad, but they, they can't do anything near what their dad could do. But anyway, it's my room now. Because my husband's been gone since 2014, so I've had all those years to, to sort things out for myself now. And I'm going to have a cup of my tea as well. I always forget about my cup of tea. I have my, my laptop. It's on a little stand that is standing on top of a little table with wheels on. And that little stand is just big enough to get my cup underneath so I can put other things on the other side of this table and other things. Anyway, I'm going to put my knitting down a minute and show you what else I've been doing. I've even got a clothes horse standing next to, to this. I can put my, just put the blanket on there. But as you can see, the... Blanket is coming on, not being much longer for that, but I had to have a rest from that because it was really hurting my my wrists and my my thumb. This thumb mainly, don't know why, but it's just thumb mainly, but it does bother me when I crochet as well. But I have been doing a little bit of crochet, so I'm going to show you what I've been doing. This, and this is one of those with the... I bought these from Timu, I think it was. I think they were about one ninety nine or two. If I remember, I don't remember exactly, but I bought these for putting on the bottom of um I've lost my crochet hook in there. I've lost for putting on the back of on the bottom of little bags. That's what this is going to be. That's what I was going to do, but you know I've noticed something, it's very handy. The bags I make for the um, the yarn ball holders, these would be handy for that too. But make a long one like that. But you can get them these in a circle. You know, you get them round in a circle. But they are very hard to crochet. Once you crochet the edge, you have to use a very fine hook to go through the holes to put the, um, the edge on. But then once you start crocheting, I'll take the, the balls of wool out because it's... It's a bit awkward for holding it with them in. But once you start crocheting, it's awkward to hold this because you're holding the um the bottom. I think it's when I sniff it, it smells like leather. So I think it could be like a very fine leather on the outside, and there could probably be some thick cardboard inside. I'm not sure what's exactly in, but when I smell it, I can smell leather and it has a little feet on the, the bottom. So when it's on the ground, it's not resting on the, um, the crochet, but it's very awkward. The first few rows, because you have to hold it and try to crochet at the same time. This, <laughs> it's not the same as crocheting straight from a chain and that. It is a little bit awkward. It takes a few rows. I can start doing it a little bit better now, now that I've got, I'll pull the wool around a bit, now that I've got it thingy, but it is trying to find, to hold it while you're doing it at first. So I've managed that, but something else I've thought about, I was thinking doing these for, in the first place for, for children, for little bags for children, for they keep all their little bits and pieces in to carry them around in. And then I thought of something else. This would make a little, a child's little like crib thing, like a little Moses basket. You'd put a little, I'd make a little, a padded little bit for the bottom and a little padded bit for the pillar and a little blanket to go over. And But you would only be able to do about nine inch dolls because the, um, the thing across the bottom is only 10 inches wide, so you could probably only need about a 9 inch little doll. It would have to be a smaller doll that would go inside if I did that. So I would have to get some nice, 
sort of pinks and whites and blues and colours like that for to do little the little crib things with. So but this one is going to be a little bag. I have one or two, I have a few more of these. I think I've got about four more of these. I did buy them a little, quite a while ago on um from Timu, I think it was. Wondering, was wondering at the time, you know, I thought, oh, they'll come in handy, but I had a clue what I was going to use them for. <laughs> but for the price of them, I thought, you know, I'll buy one or two of them. But anyway, I'll put that back in there. And that back in there for the next time. I did a little, I did that this morning. Well, yesterday morning, and I did a couple of rows. I don't do too many rows and crochet because it does bother my my hands. So I'll put that back underneath the, that goes just underneath the little stand that my laptop is standing on and I have got a bit more of this one this is what I was doing before I came up here to sort my room out I've got the two pieces done I'll take that down a little bit so you can see more of it there I've got the two pieces done for the front and I have just started the one of the sleeves. So a little bit more of that. Probably tomorrow I might get that finished. And a little bit more of mine. As you can see from last night, that's where the way I put the stitch marker in there. So I know how much I've done a little bit more. I'm gonna to have to try and stay awake a bit better by night time. I'll get more knitting done if I do. <laughs> but put that in there. Put my screen back up again. And it is much better, the light is much better in this room for doing my videos because it's been so dark lately. And if I try to do a video downstairs, I have to put the light on in the uh, the room. And in fact, I have to. I have a um, a ring light on a stand, and I have to stand that at the side of the computer because this computer is not backlit like my other one is backlit. But it's no good for doing videos because it keeps going bright and dark all the time. But this one is not backlit, so. As soon as it starts looking dull and dark, the picture goes very dark and dull as well. It just doesn't look nice. But it's nice up in this room. It's always nice and light, even when it's dull and darkish outside. I don't know what it is. And yet I've come up here this morning. There's no heating on. But my heating was on last night. And you can still feel the heat in this room. It's a much warmer room than my living room. I think I might need to get a, um, well, not a settee, but a, um, a large chair because I need plenty of room on the sides for my uh, needles and that. There's a large chair to sit and do my knitting up here, I think. I wouldn't need to worry about how cold it was. Uh, of course, my living room is so big and it does take a lot to heat it up. But it's always been nice and warm in this room. I don't know how or why, but it always is. But anyway, I had a message this morning on my um, Facebook Messenger. I am on Facebook, as some of you know, and I'll have another yeah. drink of my tea before it gets cold. It was from a lady mention that we happen to be related and I have relatives that I don't even know who half of them are I found through Facebook I found quite a few relatives actually and then I went on to um, Ancestry.com I have an, uh, an account on Ancestry.com and I found one or two through that well, this lady contacted me and she turns out to be a first cousin her father is my dad's brother my dad had a few brothers. He had one called Christopher. My dad was called Joseph. Um, he had a brother called Christopher. A brother called, his name was Egbert, but he got Ted. A brother called Freddie. Had a sister. 
called Violet and another brother, um, I can't remember what the other brother was called, but I didn't know half of them. My parents didn't sort of bother much with their relatives and that, but this lady's father was my dad's brother, Ted, and they worked, used to work together. They were both steel erectors. That's what their father was and that's what he must have got them jobs. You know, that's in them days when you, your parents got your jobs. Because I think nearly all the brothers were steel erectors, my dad's brothers and that were all in the same trade. But anyway, he lived up this part of the country and I knew him when he lived up here. And he was also married and I knew his, one of, I knew his son, my first cousin up here. But he went down south and he was divorced and married again. And apparently this young lady is one of his daughters from his second marriage. I think it's his second marriage anyway. He was a bit of a lad, what I remember of him. <laughs> and she contacted me because um, her brother had found me on Facebook and had told her about all the knitting and everything, the crochet, and she does the same thing. And she even does what I do. She sells on eBay. And when we were talking in the mess messages and that, um, she was asking, wondering if, um, the knitting is a um, like a family type of thing. And I said, it probably is because I see it was actually my father that taught me how to knit. So I see it must run in the family. But I see my older sister, Eleanor, knits a lot. But my younger sister, Linda, not so much. So, and she does the same thing, same kind of things I do. So it must run in the family. So we made a a friend on Facebook now and I've also told her about my channels here on YouTube so there's a chance that she might be looking me up on on here as well but it's nice to find relatives you never knew you had uh, especially first cousins because my father's family was a large family but anyway that's my little bit for today, now I'm going to go back downstairs and finish my cup of tea. And I would probably be going for a walk over to the post office because I have one or two knitting patterns to post. So thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you all another time. So bye for now.